Hello, I'm Sato Kodoilak and I play the harpsichord in Ensemble Molière. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this instrument and demonstrate some examples. The harpsichord evolved during the 14th to 15th century from the ideas of other instruments already in existence. For example, the system of the keyboard of the organ, stringed instruments like the sitar or harp, and the saw tree had a soundboard, tuning pins and metal strings already. Then someone added the mechanism of plucking strings with Prektra. The harpsichord spread to all over Europe but developed slightly differently in each country in terms of shape, length and depth of the body which affected the timbre of the sound. For example, early Italian models have a thin and short body so the strings were in low tension. German harpsichords went wild with numbers. There were instruments with the three manuals and some of them had the four different registers. Other places like Flanders, England and France each had a unique style and sound quality. My harpsichord is a copy built by Colin Booth in 2016 based on an early French model by Antoine Lefeuvre made in Paris around 1680. Some harpsichords have two keyboards or manuals which gives the player more options in terms of register, dynamics and type of repertoire. For example, some scores have separate lines crossing each other and require two separate keyboards. This instrument has one manual Unlike the later French harpsichord, it has an S-shaped bent side with a tailpiece. The compass of this instrument is G to D, strung in brass and has two sets of strings for each key. Two sets of strings means there are also two sets of jacks. Jacks are resting on the key and have a pivoted tongue and a damper to stop the vibration of the string to silence the sound. When I press the key down, the jack goes up. The plectrum plucks the string on the way up. When I release the key, the jack comes down and the tongue goes backwards when the plectrum touches the string. The bristle at the back of the tongue is like a spring and it pushes the tongue forward to be back in position. Then the damper touches the string to dump the sound and that's when Jack is back at the resting position. This means it is not easy to change the speed of plucking, but you can control the end of the sound by the speed of dumping to have a sudden stop of sound or diminuendo effect. Having two sets of strings and jacks allows for two different registers of sound, louder and softer. We call these 1-8 and 2-8, means either having one 8-foot register or two 8-foot register. Not on this instrument, but with other bigger harpsichord, you can find 4-foot registers, which are an octave higher, or 16-foot register to have an octave lower on the same key as well. On this instrument, there is another effect called the buff stop, sliding the button, which has pieces of buff felt attached to it. It mutes the sounds by pressing the felt against the string. This creates the effect of damping the vibration and sound like pizzicato. Although the harpsichord has narrow range compared to the modern piano, the low register and high register have a quite different qualities of sound. I'd like to play a couple of examples that demonstrate the lower range and higher range of the compass they can create quite different characters and atmospheres.
were solo pieces written for harpsichord, but I have different roles in Ensemble Molière. Most of the time my roles are playing continuo, and sometimes I play an obrigato part. Obrigato pieces means my part is written on two staves for right hand and left hand, like solo harpsichord pieces. When I play continuo in the ensemble, my part is written on one stave with single bass notes as well as numbers on above or below staves. This is called figured bass, and those figures tell me what kind of harmony I need to play along with the bass notes. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, do get in touch with us by commenting on our videos or contacting us by answerthemolière.com and we'll do our best to answer them.